Hello and welcome to By The Numbers. I'm FM Tahiti and I'm going to take you through two things in this episode. Uh, first of all, we've got our youth intake that's come through. Um, and then we're going to play a particular cup match that could be fairly important. But I'll show you the schedule. And basically, there's going to be this episode and at least one more episode um, before the end of the season. Depending on how things go, there might be another two on top of that. It, it all depends, but I'll, I'll show you in the kind of second half of this. Also, I'm not going to camera on because for some reason it's not working. So you're missing out on seeing my beautiful face and the fact I've got a really good parrot t-shirt on as well. I'll wear that for another time. So here's the youth intake, described as a potential golden generation, again, which I think is just a bug. Um, well, not really a bug, but it's about that because we're a, we were an unplayable team. We've not had many youth intakes. Each year we're here improving. The youth intake improves a bit because um, our rep goes up and so on. So I think it's just until we get a little bit higher, it'll start to level out. But for the moment, getting this. There's a few tall players, key things you want to see, six foot six. Six for two, six for one, six for three, six for one. Uh, a few short asses as well. Five three. Um, honestly, tempted to just cut from the team right now, to be honest. But we'll go through and have a look. Brian Carroll apparently is our best prospect keeper. Looks okay. Low determination there in his personality. If I sort by actual ability, apparently two star. Then we've got Andy O'Kane, in a striker, and actually to me he looks pretty good. Um, good finishing, good flair, teamwork, work rate, physical attributes are okay. It's not particularly ambitious or anything like that, but he looks quite good, which was a bit of a surprise to me because the the sort of warning by, from the youth intake beforehand, the kind of forecast was that our strikers wouldn't be that good. The best players were going to be all our wide players. Then we've got Jeff Wright, uh, central defender. And again, he looks good. Good tackling, good teamwork and positioning. Determined, aggressive, good jumping reach. I think he'll actually be pretty good. Um, and I'm glad his positioning and aggression uh, are so good. So I think in one of my Dictate the Game articles, I pointed out that for my kind of long ball tactics, my defenders did really well if their positioning and aggression was really good. And same with their jumping reach. That was better predictor than their tackling and marking quite often. And we've got Kieran Smith, the left back, who looks like he might be all right. We've got John Hanna, uh, who is an attacking midfielder, who doesn't look anywhere near as good as the rest of our attacking midfielders, to be honest. So we'll, we'll give him a contract, but I'm not expecting us to see him in the first team. Jude Wright, centre and left. Doesn't look like he's anything special. He's just tall and he's got low self-belief. Uh, so I was watching... Um, the Dodge Gamers uh, Andorra Andorra series, which you should watch as well. It's well worth a watch. Uh, Club and Country save. And he had a player with easily discouraged as their personality. Um, so we've got low self-belief. So apparently we've got a similar look there with terrible youth intakes. I'll offer him a contract just because we lose so many players from other people poaching them. And again, I'm not expecting him to make any real kind of wave. Uh, Brian Roy. Um, looks right. Fast and agile, that's about it. Philip Nixon, he looks terrible, to be honest. Cormac Adams, fantastic name, can play all the way across the back, six foot one. Still doesn't look great, yeah, but a bit better than some. Paul Tully, looks like a terrible striker. Uh, Jack Gibson, slightly better striker. Um, with a bit of work, I think he might be okay. Stuart Simpson, right back, could be all right, but the only thing really going for him, I think, is that he's fairly professional as a personality. Wayne McDermott, also right back, who is a mercenary, but he's five foot three. He doesn't look very good. There's not much going on there for me to forgive him height wise. I've got a left wing back who actually looks quite good, I think. Um, the only thing I'm worried about with him actually is the fact he's got a player trait uh, of dwells on ball which I don't like because they could have their pockets picked and lose possession. Uh, Tommy Ewell, good determination, teamwork and work rate. Good stamina, but not much else going on there, I think. And Christopher McLaughlin. Um, yeah, he's okay. So not a huge amount going on. I think Brian Carroll, Andy O'Kane, um, Jeff Wright. 
and Jack Gibson, maybe. They might be the ones who we eventually see at some point, but otherwise, not, not the greatest. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the youth intake. I'll, I'll offer them all contracts. We'll see where we get uh, with them. Even though some of them are terrible, I'll offer them contracts just so we've got bodies in the team, to be honest. And then start next season, depending on what happens, um, I might keep them anyway, or I might get rid of a few of the dodgy ones. Um, just to free up a bit of the wage budget, because but because they're on kind of appearance fee contracts or will be when they're offered them, they're not really making much of an impact on our finances, which is good because they're not good. It's the worst they've been since we've been with us. We've always managed to try and pick them up with the prize money and keep us just above, uh, but I don't think we'll do it this time. Right, so I can't remember when the last match we played on camera was I think it's probably all the way back was it Turbomore? Port Stewart? Not Breda? Banbridge? It was Banbridge wasn't it? Ah, it can't be that far. Whenever it was basically 5-2 against Banbridge, 2-1 against Moyola despite um, a red card there. Not Breda? We won 2-1 was it Not Breda one we played? It might be Not Breda one we actually played on camera. And then in the Irish Cup fifth round, we got knocked out by Ballyclare in extra time. Well, not in extra, on penalties after extra time. Um, I didn't really want us to go all that way. So I, I did put in a kind of rotated, slightly weaker squad. And Reese Hunter um, thought he was the saviour, but just made us play an extra half hour. We got knocked out, but that's fine. Then we drew one all with Port Stewart, beat them in the Intermediary Cup third round. And again, I put a weaker team out. Just because, yeah, I'm not too. At this point, I'm not too fussed about the cup. I just want to do well uh, in the league. Then we drew against Turbomore 0 0, uh, which was good because they were one of the stronger teams that kept the kind of gap there. Uh, maybe the Turbomore match was the one we played. I, I don't know. The Turbomore and Armagh. It was Turbomore and Armagh, wasn't it? I've just told you stuff that's already happened. Ignore that. 3 uh, 2 against PSNI. Um, which is close, it looks closer than it actually was, I think. Then in the fourth cup of the intermediate, fourth round of the intermediate cup, we beat Armagh 3 1 in extra time with Reese Hunter and Bonis getting goals in extra time. Then we beat Wakehurst in the league 1 0. Then we played Carrick again, second time of the season. So Carrick in the championship, second in the championship, and we beat them 4 3. And it was weird, they, they were kind of hammering us. But Devlin got a brace and then did his calf in, I think. And then Bonis popped up with a brace um, in extra time, which got us through. It came close. It was quite tight. And to be honest, they had more shots, more XG than we did, but we managed to get through, um, which then puts us into the semi final. Got a friendly against East Belfast to keep us fit in between. So we've got three games left. But this could all change. So if we win an intermediate cup semi-final, we've got Crusader Reserves or Donegal Celtic. Both winnable games, I think. If we lose against Notbrader, it doesn't really matter, but these are both winnable games. So I thought I'd play the semi-final. And then we've got Harlan Wolf Welders and Kilmore Wreck in the league. And this is what we look like in the league. So we've already guaranteed a playoff spot. So we will, at the very least, have the opportunity for a playoff game. We're one point above, not Breda. Kilmore Wreck are ninth, and Harlem Wolf Welders are eighth. And I think... When was the last time we played them? Kilmore Wreck, we beat 3-2. Harlem Wolf, I think we beat 4-0. There we go, yeah, 4-0 we beat them in December. So... We could get maximum points from that. And if we do, we won the title. If we drop points somewhere and knock Breda have takers, then we've got the playoff. So at the very least, we've got the knock Breda match in the cup. And if we lose that but win all our other games in the league in the next episode, then that'll be it. That'll be the end of the season. If we beat knock Breda, we'll have at least one episode, extra episode for the cup final. Um, if we lose our position and end up second after going to playoffs, we'll have another episode for the playoffs as well. So it all depends really on what we can do here. And to be honest, I'm not that confident um, that we're going to uh, get through 
uh, they're not braided match because I'll, I'll show you when we get there there's, there's a few things that have happened so I'll just pop, pop back in a second for the match right so we're here for the cut match um, and I'll show you why I'm not particularly confident about what's going on so if you go to transfers and then transfer history look at these three here um, well McClelland we already knew had gone but that depleted us a bit Graham McGreevy a defensive midfielder who played I care about Portadown reserves played quite a few games for us this season has gone to Portadown to play in the reserves which leaves us without a good defensive midfielder and also Michael Watson who was our kind of player on the right who was meant to be that, our best player on the right even though Robinson looked better could also cover the left when we needed it which we did need from time to time after we lost McClelland earlier on in the season not McClelland uh, Mullerhand McClelland's the right center and right and obviously Mabin's gone so it's it didn't look good there so what I did was I brought in this guy uh Keevan McCallan or Keevan McCallion and that that's right Keevan is supposedly how you say that name tell me if I'm wrong um and he doesn't look fantastic, but he looks better than Adair does, who is our other option, or playing someone who can't play in that position. But I am a bit gutted that McCreevy's gone. I mean, maybe we'll get him back at some point, but he is a traitor. That's his first strike against him, leaving us to play in the reserves of Port for Porter Down when he could have stayed and maybe got a cup and a promotion, That's a, you know, a title promotion cup. So let's see what our squad looks like for this because we've also got suspensions so Mitchell suspended Young suspended uh, McCallion is cup tied Mal Gordon is suspended uh, McGarrett is injured and Devlin is not back from his injury yet so what we've got then is we've got Hunter and Bonis up front Cockcroft Warwick and Robinson Downey I've had to place back here and the reason why I've not got a dare there is because dare can also play in the centre of defence, and I need him there to cover the fact that Mitchell and McClellan, Mitchell is suspended, McClellan's gone. At left back, we've got a youth left back, Tony Martin, who is tired and untested. Uh, though I might swap in Tommy Ray for him at some point. Um, Ian Clark's on instead of Ray on the right. And that's about it. We've also got this guy in on loan as a kind of panic loan signing because Devlin was injured from the last match when he got his brace. And he looks like he, he might be alright up here, but he's not great in the rest of his attributes. But he's on loan, he's costing us nothing, he's, he's an extra body uh, to put in there for the moment. Let's give it a go. This is why I'm not confident. We're depleted. Players playing out of position. And not Breda a second. They're only a point behind us in the league, so they're in form, they're a good side. It'll be tough, without a doubt. Are you surprised with team selection? Because we've, we've had to do it. Let's see how this goes then. That's not a good start, is it? Martin straight in there with a the foul. Making his presence known. <laughs> so they're two minutes in and they've scored a free kick as well. So they, they can still tear us apart in open play. Soft, that's what that is. Not a great long throw, but back in it goes. Bonus gets the header away, just directly at the keeper. Playing at the Oval in Belfast, which I think is probably one of the Premiership side rounds, is it? Oh, Cockcroft almost, Warwick almost. We could get a goal back in there. Who plays at the Oval? Glen Torren. And Warwick, get along. Hunter's there. Always through. Oh, try again. 
Honest? No. That was good movement by Hunter. We go. Bonus gets there. Apparently be better off to play Downey in a position he's familiar with. This is what we have to do. A tackle by Clark. I'll cock her off through. Square it, square it. Reese is there. He didn't square it, but he, he worked out the same. We're back in it. Over to the fans. Little, little bow, little show of appreciation there by Hunter. He must love the club. That's, that's what it is. Stop him. This looks like a, a counter attack. There we go. And save the corner as well. Still getting a highlight for it there. Come on, get it out. Could have done better. It's putting so many bodies on the line. Well, apparently edging it in shots there. They're looking exhausted, some of them. There's no one to come on for Harry Adair. He's, he's just got to carry on. Tony Martin could come off at half time for Ray. There's a right back round, a left back. Oh, Hunter. Good delivery. Get out to someone else. Oh, not like that. <laughs> They're already signaling they want to be subbed off. It's not even half time. Go out there and make it happen. Okay. Um, my fifth. I'll do. Keep the strikers happy. It's just the kickoff highlight. That's what I'm telling myself. There we go. A few random seats missing at the oval. See there. There. Just a few here. Eight for Cockroft, 7.2 for Hunter. They're doing okay. Oh, I said I was going to bring on Ray, didn't I? I need to pay attention. There we go. Not bad. I mean, it was straight at him, but over the wall. Remove. Oh, if only he'd finished that one. That was a nice little move. Wow, we've brought shy of 800 fans to this. Oh, that was an opportunity. Going to regret that, I think. <laughs> Overly dramatic save by Robinson. They're making a few subs. They've gone 4 4 2. They're the ones getting all the bookings. Anyone we want to bring in? No. Holding on in case it goes to like extra time. I think if we do, I'm going to have to bring on a cane for Bonis because Bonis is getting tired. Maybe Gillifan for Robinson. Okay, extra time it is. Passionate. Yeah, everyone's confident. No, you know what? Let's do it. Let's trust this team. They're going to be knackered. Let's trust them for at least 10 more minutes. Come on, Hunter. Oh, 
such an opportunity. I don't want to knack a bonus out for the actual league games. Okay, let's make the sub now then. And I should also keep one eye on whether they're any good at penalties, but to be honest, they're all pretty bad at penalties, so uh, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. So we played reasonably well. We've definitely played slightly better than them, I think. Even though Dare's probably half dead now. Is their highlight? Yeah. Oh, it's not. It's not good, is it? All of this, and they still got the ball. Almost got it away from them so many times. Saved. That's fine. That's good. Come on, Warwick. Pump those tired legs. I don't think this is a proper highlight. I think this is a last event of the match kind of highlight. So we'd have a great record at penalties. Um, apparently Gillifan's good. Harry O'Kane might be alright. Reese Hunter can go in. That's it, everyone else is terrible. Let's lead with those ones. Normally don't do anything with the kind of order taking, just leave it to the captain, but we are depleted. I'm not confident about penalties. That's why it's all my fault as well for picking him. That's why I normally don't pick him. There we go. It's going out with some kind of fight. Let's see if this Robinson, he got it. He has. Didn't realise all I had to do was just say it and he'd do it. Yeah, Hunter. Bottom corner, right hand side. You're right. There we go. Charge of this. Brown, over the bar. Over the bar. No, safe though. <laughs> That's alright. It's too old. Cockcroft's going to absolutely sky this one, isn't he? Ah. <sighs> The hope that kills you. It's always the hope that kills you. Come on. Who's coming up to miss this one then and get us knocked out? Downey. You know what? I reckon Downey can do it. I've got faith in him. What happened there? Did he just miss it so badly that... How come his missed penalty's not on there? Is it that bad they've just erased it from... Oh, could have won another cup. Calm, unlucky. Keep him happy. Right, we'll end the episode there. It was a good run in the cup. It's frustrating, but that's what happens when you go to penalties and your penalty takers are terrible. Delighted, passed, 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 on course, very pleased. One black mark against us. That's all we've got so far. We'll come back in the next episode for our last two games against Harland and Wolf and Kilmore Wreck. And thanks very much for watching. Mm -hmm.